Hey everybody, I'm Todd and this is Sweet Tea Guitars. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to the Great Guitar Build Off 2023 My Scratch Build Entry. <laughs> Alright you guys, when we left off in the last video for the Saris Theta, this is the state we were in right here. I had just put the headstock cap on it. I've got that white, black, white line. Let me hide my eyes. I think that is really cool. A few of you guys had mentioned that you really like my neck transition carve right there. I really appreciate that because I worked really hard to get that super fluid and smooth and i'm glad some of you guys noticed um, how much time and how important i think that is right there it is literally a seamless transition we need to get our tuners drilled in i need to get this headstock sanded final sanded up to 320. let's get to work on this thing we're going to take some 180 grit sandpaper i've got on this hard block right here and we're just going to start sanding this thing Um, we're pretty good on the front here, but I do have a plan for this thing that I want to try that I saw on a Ben Crow video not too long ago. Now, it wasn't something he did. It was something that was done on a guitar he had brought into the shop. The way they had the tuners done was the bushings for the tuners were actually recessed into the headstock cap. I thought that was a really cool look. That's one of the reasons I glued a headstock cap on. My headstock is now a little thicker than it has to be. We're sitting at about 18 millimeters thick. But for now, I know this headstock needs sanding. So let's just continue on. I've got a line drawn already where the backside of my nut's going to need to be. Here's my nut right here, Cosmo Black, Floyd Rose nut, black screws. I've got stainless steel screws to replace those. I think that's going to look pretty cool. I want to get this lined up just like I want it. And then we'll mark off the sides. I'm two and a half millimeters too high in the center. That's going to be about perfect when I shave this down pretty much flat. I don't care that it has a little bit of back tilt, but I want to be able to meet my fretboard flush with the front edge of this nut right here. So I'm gonna have to really pay attention to that so I don't mess up my intonation or my scale length by grinding too much on the, this side of my fretboard. All right, you guys, I gotta thin this headstock out about three millimeters, so we're gonna grind on this thing for a minute with the Shinto. So how I came up with this distance, I'm using these satin chrome tuners from Hip Shot right here. I measured from the contact part of the base right here up to where that cut or that channel starts in my post. Well, I had to find out how far up my bushing will catch threads on that. So what I've done was I screwed the bushing down right till it meets that cut. And I measured the distance in between here and here. Now that's obviously minus the washer. Let's put a washer on there and measure it. We'll go ahead and decide right now. That's 14 millimeters exactly. I set my caliper to 16 and a half millimeters right there. I took this side right here of my caliper and I rested it on the face and then I just scratched a line all the way around the edge right there on both sides. I can go all the way down to within about a millimeter of that 16 and a half millimeter line. Then I can change over to a different tool and clean that up. All right, we're going to call that good right there, and I'm going to switch over to the medium cut Iwasaki, which is going to clean this right up and flatten it right out. I 
I want to stay off of my volute carve, even though I will have to deepen this up now a little bit. That's actually going to be cool, though, because that will allow me to create even more of a dramatic effect. And I actually want to create kind of a bowl right here without losing too much of the thickness. Now we're talking. What I want to do now is figure out a new center line on the headstock since we put this cap on and since I removed all that material from the back last night. I know that I want a 43 millimeter nut width. So we're going to line this up at 21 and a half millimeters, which is what the size of my fretboard is on that end. And I will put myself a center mark right there. I'm going to take a ruler. So I want to make sure I'm on that line and on my center line back here at the bottom of the body. And just make myself a center line. That's perfect. I'm going to use my headstock template to just make a mark where I want these things. From the center line to the center of the hole we want that to be 6.35 millimeters. And I would rather err on the side of caution and go a little further than not far enough because we want our string splaying out, if anything. There we go. We'll move down to this one, which is 16 and a half millimeters offset from this tuner. Our second tuners are 14.15. Come down to this one. So now we want to be at 21.95. There's our tuner layout. What I want to do now is tricky and could spell certain disaster. But we're going to do it anyway. I want to recess these washers and these bushings down into the headstock. So I need a bit that's going to cover the outside diameter of this washer. 15. And then as far as depth goes, we need to measure that as well. Yeah, 3.39 and I don't mind if it sticks up just a little. We'll go a 3 millimeter depth. All right, I'm just starting to see my black veneer. So that's how far I'm going to carry all these down. Let's drill ourselves a pilot hole down through these center points left by our Forstner bit. What we're going to do at this point is drill an 8 millimeter hole all the way through the headstock front to back. I want to file these out just a little. I don't want them so tight that if this guitar ends up in a damper environment, I wouldn't want these to get swelled so tight in there that you couldn't get them out. So yeah, I want to take the 10 millimeter part just till the 12 millimeter section starts to chamfer the hole. Oh yeah, these are the perfect tuners for this headstock. All right, you guys, so here we go. I got my tuner bushing and washer holes recessed down in the headstock. It's not completely cleaned up yet, but I think this is really going to look cool. What I want to do right now is thin this out a little bit and get my nut shelf cut. I'm going to draw a couple of lines on the outside of this thing. There we go. So what I want to do without nicking my fretboard 
I want to file myself a shelf in here. We'll take this triangle file right here and just chamfer this edge back without touching the lead edge of my fretboard. All right, you guys, I think we're gonna leave it just like that. That is really, really good. Now what we can do is start to shape on this, but we need to draw our lines back in there once again. And let's just start gently creeping up on that shape. I've got my guitar in the vise with some cork wrapped around it so I don't mark it all up. Let's just get going on this thing. Oh, I wanted to let you guys know. I've added some Tornelli t-shirts to the Sweet Tea merch store. So if you guys want to grab yourself one, I got them priced bare bones. I've redesigned a few of the Sweet Tea tees on there as well. I've added a collaboration t-shirt, actually two collaboration t-shirts. I added those just to kind of commemorate my collaborations that I've been doing with Geo. So let's get sanding you guys. I'm excited about this. We're getting really close now. This is 180 grit right here. And once I get the neck taken care of, we'll switch over and get the guitar sanded up to 320 grit. I mean, I've spent like, um, you know, quite a few hours already sanding on this thing. If I try to eliminate as many sharp corners as I can, that will help me when it comes time to polish this thing. I don't have to worry quite as much about sanding through. I find that passion has so much more to do with it than even skill because the skills will come. If you continue to do this, you will gain the skills. But you can't let yourself lose your passion. Mistakes don't bother me because I know I can figure out a way around most things that sometimes ends up better than the original plan i mean that's what it's all about you guys is learning let's run the light over the surface of the neck and find out if we've got any little imperfections or whatever it looks really good let's hit the edge of the fretboard That's good. I just don't want it to feel sharp is all. I want to mark out my two screw holes for my locking nut. I'm going to mount this from the top, not through the neck because I got a volute. I'm really excited because I know before this weekend's out, regardless if I have to do it three times or not, I'm going to have color on this guitar. Now let's take our string locks off the nut so we can have better access to those mounting holes. All right, so it's just those two holes right there off center. This is crucially important that we get this right. And I'm gonna mark this with a 0.5 millimeter pencil first. Just enough so we can double check ourselves All right, punch those in just a little deeper. Let's measure the diameter on these screws. 3.08 inside of the threads, we're at two and a half. So I'm gonna drill a two millimeter hole right there. That should give us a good bite. And I would not usually use tape to mark a depth, but we've only got two holes and it's a small drill bit, so we'll be fine. Oh yeah, we're gonna be great. I'm using a mixed color on this guitar. I'm using a satin chrome tuners, hip shots, but Cosmo Black or Black Chrome hardware. 
that's pretty much the last thing we needed to do to the headstock. I shaped it up last night. We got it sanded. Now I've got an assortment of sanding blocks out over here and we're going to start at 220. We're getting ready to tape this guitar up and get some color put on this thing. I am so excited about this. I have been downright giddy over this, you guys. I am going to grab myself a stool and I'm going to tape up the top of this guitar so we can seal up these bevels. I got myself a helper, a magnifying light. I've got it mounted to my desk. We're going to start off with this quarter inch fine line. So what we're going to use is Simtech easy sanding sealer that takes um, MEKP catalyst. Let's stir this up away from the guitar. I don't feel any solids in the bottom. And I only want about two ounces of this stuff, if even. Two percent methyl ethyl ketone peroxide is what this is. You want to mix this really well. Because if any of it winds up without getting hardener in it, it won't dry. It'll be sticky and nasty. I'm not worried about getting it on the sides. We're going to sand all this and the sides are going to get sealer anyway. I want to be careful not to leave any huge brush marks in the surface. That's tacking up really nice. I'm going to put another coat on. I'm going to pull this tape off and see if we've got a clean line. I think we do. Um, that's probably going to take about 30 minutes to an hour. And we're going to get ready to sand this as soon as the stuff in this cup turns really super hard. It's gelled right now but it's not hard. All right, you guys, I got 320 on my hard sanding block here. And this has been drying for about 30 minutes or so. And I just wanna sand the top of this body until I've got a nice tight line. 320 grit not being particularly aggressive is in my opinion, the grit to use for a finished sand on a guitar body. Some guys say 400, but I find that you get slightly better punch on your color if you're staining, if you stop at 320. I am not an expert yet. <laughs> I'm getting there. All right, you guys, we're going to tape up the end of this neck. I'm using 3M Precision Masking Tape. This is product number 6529, three quarters of an inch wide. The adhesive on this is specifically made for this kind of thing. My plan is to be purple in like an inverted V. Then I'm going to take rows and create the inside of that V with the rows and then I'll blend it all together. I'm not going to use black as a base color. I want pure color on this guitar and I feel like black, especially on the rows, is going to muddy everything up. So I don't want to use it. So kind of like that. You can kind of see it gets brassy and that's just the nature of purple, but we're going to rub all this back. So I'm not concerned about that. We're going to rub it back with steel wool. Rose. I'm going to need 
a much, much darker red than this. I got to get some real red out here. I don't want too much of this, and I want this blended with the purple just right in that area. I want to keep it rose as much as possible. I'm going to take a little blue to get down in these lower areas right here. This is doing it right here, you guys. I was actually wanting a more of a violet color than um, like a grape purple. Sucking the red into the blues, making sure that we keep this violet. I like that. I know this does not look like much right now, especially on camera, you guys. It looks like a bloody mess. But I promise you, once I hit this with steel wool, it'll be more than fine. It's not really going to come to life until I spray or until I put clear on it. But as you can see, that light blue did wonders for this area. Purple tiger. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but. Getting ready at this point to do one final blend on this with that light blue. And we're going to call it. Alright you guys, I know you can't really tell what's going on here. But when I take still wool to this, that's going to suck some of the chalkiness and some of that darkness out of here. The flame on this thing is jumping off of this top it is super cool um, if you guys can see that i have not stained the headstock yet because i want to get my logo burned in there before i do that i've got to rub back this whole body with steel wool before i start to apply some sealer and then i'm going to brush on melamine lacquer and go for a high gloss finish like Geo normally does, which is going to take me about three weeks to accomplish because that stuff takes forever to cure. But I want to try it because it does not involve spray. You know, it's another option that I have not used yet, and I want to know how to do it. So don't forget to head over to Tornella Guitars here on YouTube. Check out Geo's new videos. Leave him some comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And speaking of subscribe buttons... Don't forget to hit that subscribe button here on my channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date as I release the rest of the videos for the Ceres Theta and every other thing I've got coming to the channel over the next few months. I really appreciate you guys leaving all the kind comments you've left on this guitar. Thank you so much. I always read you guys' comments. I respond to every comment left. I always try to make it a point to do that because it matters to me. You guys are who have helped me grow my channel as fast as I have been able to do that. And I could not have done that without you guys supporting me and coming along on my journey with me. I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, peace and love.